Hey, Mallory, I've learned what a pre-roll is. <laughs> what the heck is a Patreon? Well, a Patreon is a way for audiences to support artists and makers uh, whose content that they love with a monthly contribution to an account on patreon.com and for more information you can go to sohere.com slash patreon that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n and you'll be redirected to our patreon page where we outline possible contributions you could make and rewards and that's another way that you can support sohere.com now on to the podcast Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Sewing Out Loud. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And we also have um, Baby Jerome here. Yep. Baby Jom. I just posted on Instagram that it's my first postpartum podcasting session. But I guess they've all been postpartum because I've already had a kid, right? <laughs> I guess my entire you know, life has been yeah, postpartum for the last 37 yes. years or whatever. <laughs> oh, this is my postpartum I, this. There must be, like, no. There must be some sort of medical, like... Definition. Definition, like, the, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. You should I know, guess. right? I, well, right? No, I shouldn't know. I, did, I was not into maternity nursing. Well... But Fred can let us know. Uh, fun fact, or or that's a good this is a good intro because today we're going to talk about parenting and sewing, or having children and sewing. Yeah, and, I've uh, done that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I did that and a couple the, of times. The reason this came up, I, I'm really excited to talk to you about this <laughs> because. Oh gosh. There is a woman who I follow on Instagram, and her Instagram handle is Michelle dot a dot sews. So Michelle A. Sows. Uh, she's in the UK. She used to be over on King's Drive. I remember when she had a different Instagram handle. <laughs> and she makes really beautiful things. Um, but part of that Instagram challenge that uh, was happening, that So Photo Hop, that happens every September, uh, one of the prompts was Why I Sew. And she posted this and I asked her permission if I could use this post in the podcast just in case anyone is uh pleasing you yes right yeah. they're like oh my god you used it. okay so I, I did ask her and so she says why I so it's funny when I stopped to really think about it I got quite emotional my scribbles sum it up for the most part I've never been cool or outgoing or fashionable I'm a reserved bookworm and introvert I could never find clothes that fit me well and gave me confidence I had kids and was and I was tired. Happy, don't get me wrong, but I was looking for a way to find myself and love myself for who I am, and I found it in spades behind a sewing machine. Uh, you know, and, and then in in her picture, she says, "Why I sew?" It's and so she, like sentimental. I know, I know, and I think it gets even more sentimental here. Okay, okay, because in one of the pictures, she wrote down "Why I sew," and before kids is one column, and after kids is another column. Oh, yeah. And in her before kids, it's like just a, like a, a list of garments and why she made them. Right. Like she made pants because she has long legs. Or, right. You know. Right. And then after kids, she says, I love them beyond measure, but what happened to my body? What happened <laughs> to my spare time? What happened to me? Not a mommy, not a wife, me. I'm like, right. I'm crying. <laughs> you can get lost like, in it, yeah. Reading this, you know. Yeah. And then I thought, well, you are hormonal. Oh, for sure. But I'm not I, crying, but I get it. I also, so I read this actually before I had, you know, baby number two. Like, I, this post is from a few weeks ago. And I was like, oh man, like, I feel like I know how she feels. You know, kids take up a lot of your time. And then I was like, oh my God. You know, like, I work with my mom. <laughs> like, I wonder if I'm still taking up her time. You think? <laughs> so, so, mom, uh, I've got, of course, thoughts on my parenting and sewing journey. Yeah. But tell us about yours a little bit. And I, I think we've covered this a little bit on another podcast. Hmm. I can't remember exactly what the topic was, but... um. Let's get real specific. Like, you had your first baby. 
Well, 37 years ago. Right? Yeah. <laughs> when I when I was actually pregnant the first time with my first child, um, I had sort of a complicated uh, situation going on. My mother was dying. So she was diagnosed with cancer, and I uh, found out I was pregnant two weeks after she was diagnosed with cancer. And um, at there was a point where I actually took a leave of absence from my job and stayed at home and took care of her until uh, she died. There were no hospice-type situations at, at that point in time. Uh-huh. So if this was sort of a pioneering kind of thing. There were also not like home health. There was one home health organization called Visiting Nurses, and those were for people who were going to get better or needed, you know. Right. So I knew the physician. I knew the oncologist. He knew me as, you know, and actually lived like in the same neighborhood as my mother. So he allowed me to do this. And one thing that I eventually moved in with my parents. Uh I left my home, you know, my husband and moved in with my parents. I don't even remember exactly when that was. Um, I was there for like four or five months. I can't remember. But, um, and the one thing I brought with me was my sewing machine. Yeah. And I don't even remember having a plan to make anything, but I I knew I would be confined. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to get to leave this a lot like you needed to be close to well right your you patient, know they we did mother. have we did have beepers uh-huh. my father had a beeper then but we didn't have cell phones and things like this to communicate so I had to pretty much be on hand I was doing total nursing care she was bedridden you know so I was there and but I had I I remember setting my sewing machine up in her living room you know and actually the one thing I remember sewing was the bassinet cover. Oh, yeah. Right. I had the bassinet that had been, you know, many cousins had slept in or whatever. So I did do that. But it's kind of funny, isn't it, that that's what... I also brought my Jane Fonda um, exercise LP and book with me. So we That was still, all going on in the living room. We still have the Jane Fonda we do. book and LP. And that's I believe right. we still have the bassinet. And we still have that sewing <laughs> machine, too. And we still have the sewing machine. We do. And we have the baby that yes, filled we, that bassinet. We have, we right. have the baby and we have you. Right. And, uh, right. <laughs> right. Um, the other thing that I did during that time was um, instead of having my mother in hospital gowns, I slit the back of her, her nightgown so mm-hmm. she could wear her nightgowns, you know, slit the back of them, um, finished off, you know, the, and I think I, I did not use Velcro. I, I think I used ties. Ties. Yeah. Um, Velcro was used on hospital gowns for a while until they realized it got old and crunchy and gathered dirt, you know, yeah, that's debris. Good. Yeah. So I guess being a parent, you know, right there and the, the minute I got, okay. So basically sort of what happened to make a involved story more simple I had my baby and my mother died at the like the same time Mm -hmm. okay so when I went back to my home which I did after my mother died and this I brought the baby home to my my mother's house and then a couple she she died that day and then so when I went back to my home um I started sewing and I know it was my therapy yeah. I know it was my therapy and it was my escape. Um, and guess what? You can cry while you sew. <laughs> and nobody can hear you if your machine's loud enough. Um, it's like crying in the bathtub and letting the water run. Nobody can hear you or crying in the shower. Nobody can hear you. So you have your own little private cry. And, you know, and still I would... You know, I had lost my mother and I had the hope of the future in this child. Right. So the sewing went along with the hope of the future, looking forward. And I, I made her, I made that baby a lot of stuff. Right. Clothing was still expensive then. You could, uh-huh. you could sew to save money in those days. Right. You know, I, I so I made that baby lots of, st- I made a car seat cover. I don't even know if they sold them at that time. Yeah. I, I don't remember, but I, it was gingham check. I remember that <laughs> pink gingham check. But um, you know that does not surprise me. I feel like you may have gone through like a gingham 
You have that pillow was made out of yes. that same fabric. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when I freehanded embroidered on the machine, uh-huh. Mallory, and she took that little pillow oh, to preschool. Oh, that should be the photo. Oh, do we have it? Oh, yeah, I have it. You have it someplace? Uh, yeah, I got it someplace. Okay. Oh, that'll be the photo. Not only did I freehand embroider it on the machine, I believe I used construction thread. I did not have any um, like embroidery, embroidery thread. thread. Right, yeah. right, right. Did they make embroidery thread? Thread. I don't know. I I, I, I I don't know. That was 1989. I don't. They had to, they didn't made they? Something they had like to, that, right? I guess, but yes. I was using what was on hand. I'm sure at the time. I, I'm sure that was a spontaneous creation. Right. It was not planned out. So, and the fact that, like I said, it was freehand. You know, I, I dropped my feed dogs and freehand put. Put on the uh, zigzag stitch and went to town. Right, freehanded Mallory on your no, pillow. I got, I, I'm almost certain that I know where that is. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my, uh, you know, having a baby story is not as good as yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it is. If I can tell when you ask for the epidural, <laughs> that would be the best I part. Believe that should be bonus content for our Patreon <laughs> okay. people. Don't That's a good do idea. That. That's know, a good right? idea. Mallory's. I'll birth describe story. Mallory's birth uh, birthing Mallory's from birth my perspective. Story is is uh, exclusive uh, members only content. You know, some some podcasters have special episodes for that's their, right their patreon right li- uh people and i've always been like well like our podcasts are about like sewing technique like right we want to disseminate this information right you know? but maybe that would be a good one and so if you're interested in that you can let <laughs> us know you can let us know um <laughs> so uh i think that finding time is hard for new parents but i've never yep. really heard you complain about that well you know i think i mean not have you know what i had been taking care of my mother like she was a baby right you kind of like had a a a, a my my dilemma was honestly i thought what am i going to do with my mother and this baby Mm -hmm. when i was delivering and i i thought oh man you know, what am I going to do? How is this going to work out? Because I was around the clock with my mother, and now I have a baby, and the baby's around the clock, you know that. too. Yeah, right. right. And my mother graciously stepped aside for the baby. <laughs> you know, she held the baby and basically went into a coma and died. That's exactly what happened. So, um, you know, I guess I was used to not having my time there for about eight or nine months. You had it. Before I had... Um, my child. I think you have a you have had in your life a lot of energy too. Like, you know, we talked about your illness. I think in the last podcast, right? You know, the Jeez, fact that you're getting like more. I know. Well, everybody knows a lot of stuff about you now. Um, <laughs> oh man, I'm wearing underwear. Let's see what else do you want to know. So, um, uh, I feel like you've always had a lot of energy and time, and I think that something I feel insecure about is like. When I'm not sewing or, like, I have a project that I haven't gotten done, I'm like, oh, like, I feel like mom just would have, like, found the time. Like, is there well, anything I think, in your life I think that I you w- didn't get well, done? Well, I do believe <laughs> I was a multitasker before Oprah made that, like, a popular term. Oh, did Oprah make that a popular well, Yeah, term? well, she thought she did. She also thinks that she um, made it popular to get fitted for a bra. But, oh, okay. You know, I was doing that a long time before she had that TV show. <laughs> so I... You know, you carve out time for what you want to do. Did you, do you ever feel like there's something, I know this is a long time ago, but like something you just like never got done because you didn't have enough time? I feel like that more now than then. Yeah. After I became ill and, and the energy got zapped away, I feel like that more now than then. I used to, you know, if I decided to do something, I got it done. I feel like I have so many ideas. And well, then... now that, that's a different thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I have a lot of ideas that I don't get to bring to fruition. To execute. Right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I think people, you know, I work from home. We both now work from home now that we no longer have the store. But, like, you know, the the demands of the business right. are still very real and time-consuming. Oh, and you work just as hard. Ahem, leggings, kits, right? Right. <laughs> Well, and I mean, it's not like it's not like if you work from home, you have to work less. Right now, there is something I don't have to commute. Right, 
you know, but... But you'll fill that time with something else. That's right. You know, fill it with packing orders or with, right. you know, well, now we're doing all these online classes and stuff like that. And then now I have this new baby. Or you'll and, sew something else. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> but I feel I feel like I have not been getting the sewing done, you know, that, that I'd like to get done, of course. Well, but. there's also, I mean, there's also times in your life where you have to, you know... Like I like I was I was saying the other day, this baby's new and new doesn't last very long. Right. So suck it up. You know, don't run up and sew when this baby's new because he won't be new for very long. Yeah, I think I've kind of had to remind myself, like, okay, right. chill out. You didn't make the three shirt dresses that were in your head. You know, like, right? Well, and hang with and, your baby. And fortunately, you know? <laughs> what may happen is you may decide that you don't want those three shirt dresses. So then you're like, well, I only need one now. We have a dog in the room. We have a dog and a baby and a Sam in the room. So if there's been any extra sounds, it's Sam. Okay. <laughs> She's got her mouth wide open right we're, now. We're both kind of tired right now. The growling um, is Sam. Yeah, that's right. So she was barking at the propane truck. Um, <laughs> she shook her head and her tags jiggled. That's jingled. right. That's right. Um, but, yeah, the, pro- the, the, the propane truck really upsets Sam. <laughs> was I saying okay so let's take a little message break and then come back and shift the conversation a little bit towards uh how you how you decide what to do and what gets done there you go when you have kids and or any kind of I think maybe I was gonna say this at the beginning of the episode before I knew that you would share about your mom of course oh I thought I was supposed to do that well I I of course (laughs) know that story but I'm I try to be careful about what I just like decide to share about you on, you know, the internet. Oh, yeah. But, I've know, noticed. Yeah. I always ask. <laughs> um, but this applies to people who are in any type of caretaker situation. Right. Like, you know, people are taking care of spouses who need parents, spouses, uh, parents, children, spouses, children, children of all ages. You know, exactly. I'm talking about a newborn and I have, you know, like neurotypical, physically able Right. Children, you know, um, right. and a lot of people in our group will say, you know, I have a severely disabled right. child. Someone that has need, you know, needs yes. beyond what you think of, you know, just having a baby. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And right. so, well, I got, you know, we'll take this message break, but I'm very aware that I'm pretty darn fortunate, you know, in my, in my situation. And her mother lives next door. Yeah. It's wonderful. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> message break. <laughs> Okay, Mom, are you clear on what a Patreon is? I think so. Do you know what we're offering for our Patreon <laughs> you contributors? Said different, you said different levels. What, what's a level have to do with anything? There are different levels. So oh, not like a level to level like your lumber or your wall or whatever. No. Nope. Levels. Levels. Levels uh, at which you can contribute. So this is a way for our um, people who maybe don't buy sewing supplies from us or who live in a place where it's hard to ship sewing supplies. Yeah, because I know some of that shipping can get up there. That's right. And we always think it's great for you to support your local sewing stores as well. And so if you just think that we're a rollicking good time, the (laughs) Patreon is one way to support our media so we can keep making videos and keep Sam in bonbons and gilded pedicures. Okay. Gilded pedicures. So our first level is the $3 a month level. And like you said, some people... Pay more for coffee. That's right. Even you don't drink coffee, so you nope. don't even, you don't even know. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> for three dollars a month, you're supporting So Here Media, and you're actually going to get a handwritten love note from from you. You're Me? Gonna, yeah. Oh, ha, oh. Ha, okay. Uh, <laughs> you'll you'll get a handwritten love note um, after after you pledge the three dollars a month, and it'll be on a fun postcard. That you've designed, that or I've designed. I've designed, or somebody designed. That's that, right. That works here and lives here. And then the next level is an eight dollar a month level, and you'll get a postcard, two okay. coffees, Go, two co- <laughs> two point six six coffees. <laughs> uh, you'll you'll get the postcard, but then you'll also get a special so porter keychain, ah, exclusive yes. to our so porters, and uh, that's the only way you can get it. That's the right. Just level. We're not gonna the the Patreon rewards are going to be exclusive to the Patreon okay. donors. Okay, and then our uh, highest level. Oh, these all have cute names like the straight stitch and the back stitch, and the highest level is the zigzag. 
Okay. Okay. That's your favorite sewing term stitch <laughs> oh it's my absolute favorite it's the only one and i ever use this is an 18 dollar a month pledge and you'll get a love note and you'll get a keychain and you will also get access to a super secret private facebook group where Ooh. you and i go live uh-oh uh, once a month, and we do rollicking fun things. Rollicking like you say. fun things, yes, yes. We'll do. We'll have lots of fun. It's going to be a little bit more produced than my live broadcast in the self sewn wardrobe. We're going to have a camera person here, so Sam. we'll have like some <laughs> planned content. Yes, we'll have some planned content. We'll talk to you all. We'll answer questions. And since we'll have a camera person here, what that means is we can zoom in. We can we actually can like, respond to your questions in, in well, a better way. And we can zoom in on sewing machines on if what we're, we're demoing doing, right. the technique. And we can do that live too. Real camera shots, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we introduced the Patreon um, a little bit ago, and there are uh, lots of people who contributed. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, and actually, the most popular level has been the zigzag. All right. <laughs> but any amount really helps us to uh, support the hosting fees, the equipment upkeep, um, pay our staff. Uh, and ourselves, and make more fun sewing media for Wait you. Wait a minute. You said you acted like I got paid. Yeah. <laughs> if enough people pledge to the Patreon, I could get paid we can too. start paying you. Okay. okay. <laughs> so uh, once again, go to sewhere.com slash Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Like you're a patron, but in the future or something i see uh and you can see the different levels there and you will get access to that facebook group your what happens here is your card is charged at the first of the month Uh uh-huh and then you'll get access um or you'll receive a notification that your reward has shipped okay i see and you can also choose to uh contribute and any amount of your choice so if you're like you know all I got right now is $1 to throw at these ladies. Throw you it. You can do that, too. Okay. <laughs> all right. So here.com slash Patreon. Thank you to all of our wonderful patrons. So, 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 sewing out loud. All right. And we're back for real this time. Uh, okay. So you kind of were like, I, I think you were like, well, you might not want those three shirt dresses. Well, right. I think, you know, ah. often, <laughs> often, you know. Ideas evolve, not only from nothing, but, you know, to this idea, and then they may continue to evolve into, well, I don't really need three dresses. I would be better off with two dresses than doing this or something like, I mean. I get a little bit, though, of analysis paralysis sometimes. Yeah. So I really, I think my trouble is, I think maybe what I need to do is have a notebook handy all the time, and I can do that at home. I need to write everything down because I'll have ideas for blog posts or videos that we should make. And and they need to all get written down. And then I need to decide what to do. And I think you and I are very similar in this. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. We have um, a multifaceted interest. We don't just sew. There's other things that we do also. Sure. Um, You know. I showed mom all the knitting projects I was like. Right. So, I mean, you know, I, I think there's some people that. Go to work, raise their children, and don't sew, don't knit, don't, right. don't, you know, they're perfectly happy. Yeah. They're not confused like we are as to what to do with their time. A little simpler, maybe. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you know, um, we, we both like to cook, you, you know, think, I, mean, you I mean. that we overcomplicate our lives yes, a little bit with yes. our interests? No. Yeah, I think sometimes. I think you're right. If I didn't have all these ideas, like, I wouldn't feel conflicted about what to do. <laughs> well, you know, okay, the other day, this person said to me, I said something about, oh, where's your clock? And she said, oh, I don't know. It broke or something. I think it was just the battery, but I couldn't get the back off. And I said, well, you know, I could have got the back off. She goes, that's right. You can do anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> No, I, I think that's – we do, yes. Yeah. We, I could have got the back off that clock, I'm sure. I think that was part of the deal with closing the store that it allowed us to focus more. We've said this before. On our own interests. Oh, on no. yes, on what like we wanted to sew right. and what we wanted to teach. Right. As sewing machine dealers, and I think rightly so. Right. We were trying to be all things to all people. Right. You had there. There was the quilter, the crafter, the, the you know candlestick maker, whatever. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so we actually were, we did have that woman who made all those candle 
motive covers. That's Tony yeah. Jacob. Yeah, there you go, Tony. Hey, Tony. That's worth your $18 a month pledge. <laughs> oh, you got mentioned. <laughs> yeah, she changed her. She changed her Patreon pledge. Oh, she, was she upped it or level. lowered it. She was at a lower <laughs> level. And then Lonnie said that it's just like 60 cents a day to yeah. be a zigzag patron. And do you, get oh, enough, Lonnie. do you get as much enjoyment out of ZD and Mallory? And then she was like, that convinced me. And I was like, oh, well. Yeah, our love affair continues with right. Lonnie. So um, what was I saying? Oh, okay. So we right. closed the shop. Now. I don't know if I've ever shared this on Mean with me or the, the rest podcast. of the world. No, I shared oh. it with you. But sort of the decision to close the store and move to this model, it had been floating around in our minds. You know, the fact that we had something to offer in a different way. Right. Um, <clears throat> it had been floating around in our minds. And there was one night right after I had Zelda and – she was a really good sleeper. She'd wake up, she'd nurse. She'd wake up, change her diaper, she'd nurse, she'd go right back to sleep. You know, so even if she woke up every three hours, it didn't matter because she would just go right back right, to sleep. Right, right. Now, sometimes I wouldn't go right back to right. sleep, right? Okay, so I, I'm i looking, I think right now, at like the clipboard, like legal pad that I wrote this all on, and I was like, I have to go into the store every day. And do these things, and I don't think we're doing exactly what we want to do. Right. And I want to do, I I want to change this, you know. And I remember writing down just like kind of this stream of consciousness stuff and, you know, getting really. I remember you showing this to me. Yes, and I was like, we just need to kind of cut out some of the things that aren't going with like what we're doing. And I know that there are going to be customers listening to this who loved our store right appreciated what well, we did well we loved the store I, we yeah. liked the store too but there it was, was hard to give up it was but there were some things that I was like I just don't want to be dealing with this day in and day out I want to be teaching people well, to you're sew all, it, right and and you knew you were going to be raising a and family then I have this baby you know right. and it really I think actually having kids has helped me Focus in some ways. Clarify yes. sometimes. Do you Are think you, that happened for yeah, you? Yeah, well, you also, I think, what's valuable to you? What's the yeah. truly holds a value? Um, I think, I, I definitely. I took a maternity leave sort of from the shop when I had Zelda. And I took a little longer than I thought I would because she was in the hospital for a week. And I remember that this woman said she was interested in buying a sewing machine Uh but I wasn't at the shop and she wanted to do all this like price matching comparing deals between us and another dealer and da 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 right and I remember Sam calling me and being like Mallory I'm really sorry but like I can't talk to this lady about this stuff like you know I'm the manager I'm the one who would be like that she wanted to buy like a $12,000 $12,000 sewing machine. Right. And she said she was fine with email. And I emailed back and forth with this lady, checking my email I remember constantly this. Yeah. with this new baby. And um, she would just assure me, she's like, well, I, I am going to buy it. I just need to know this and this and this. And then, like, I wouldn't answer her email right away. And she'd be like, well, I think I'm going to buy from the other dealer, you know. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I need to sustain our business. I need to be available to this person. I need to answer this email, like, right now, you know. And then we, uh, it's three days. Three days that right. I like constantly emailed. Absolutely, with this person. it was. Yep. And then she's like, you know, I just, I really should have just realized that I, I can't afford this. And I thought, <laughs> this is harassment. I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is, this is, uh, this episode is going to be marked explicit because this is bullshit. Yeah. And I thought that people, if you've ever worked in retail, you've well, come across a person well, like this. Well, I think, before. I think, I think a lot of places or a lot of times you will find that people don't value your time at all right and I'm they not, don't respect it i'm not saying that anyone who would ask a question about a machine right. is going to do such a thing oh, but we, the, we were we were very service oriented we this, very much took care of people the way this went i was like at the end of this i was like okay obviously this person was just like being kind of crazy you right. know and i thought i should not have even i should have been like you know you should have said, have I'm having a back, baby. I yeah. can talk to you I'll in a week. i have to get back with right. you in a week or two, you know, right. is what I should have said. And I, I'm, like, so worried about, like, losing that sale and da 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 And I, I think that it helped me maybe get, like, a little more clear. Like, you know, you got to take care of what you got to take right. care of. Like, we sold all those leggings kits. We had to get them out. You know, right. like, you know, they're, you. I'm still working. I'm, you know, what, 
15 days postpartum or something and we're working and whatnot but i've i've like been saying i'm not going to do live broadcasts this week right or, right you no know, so cutting it down and then i'm like yeah i just gonna well, well i think what you're i think what you're saying I, th- I think what you're saying is you know you spent all that time and it meant nothing to anyone but you. Well, and then it was I, your time that got used up. Yeah, and I could have been sitting there looking at my baby. That's right. You know? That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> or when uh, you know when I was at the store. Or you could have been resting. Yeah. Or when I was at the store, like being tortured by someone because we didn't do pants hemming, and I'm like, my baby is at home. <laughs> and then one time, my husband texted me, and he said, "This is when she was pretty young." He goes. I think she's looking for you. Ah! Can you try to get oh, home God, soon? Oh, God. And I yeah. yelled at him. I was right. like, I, you Don't never tell text me that. that. You know? right. like, Don't tell me that at work. I was like, I'm always trying well, to get home. Okay? Know, I, I had the problem when, when you guys were young. I had the problem. I was I was a nurse. Uh-huh. Yes. And, okay, so there weren't things like family leave or nothing. You had no rights as a mother or a family. Right. Okay? So if you were sick... I went to work and took care of other sick people. Mm-hmm. If you were sick, I was not allowed to call in that you were sick. Right. So I either had to do that or I had to call in and lie right. and say I was sick. Okay. Because it was not an excused absence that you would get what they call written up. If you called in and said, I can't come in because my kid is sick. Right. There was no laws to protect you or anything like that. So, um, you know, I did a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, and it was it was irritating. Yeah. It was, you know, it's I... like why do I have to lie to be home with my sick child? I also think that this business and I hope that this isn't coming across as like complaining. Like I said before the message break, I know I'm very fortunate in a lot of ways just to sort of discussing, you know, the implications. Well, I think everybody feels their own dilemma. Sure. You know, I mean, and we see this repeatedly in um post on the self sewn wardrobe. How do how do you how do you as a young mother make time to sew? Okay. It, I'm sorry, it's not just the young mother that's trying to make time to sew. It's, it's the old mother. Yeah. It it's everybody. Well, I mean we have one member and I want to It's say just her name. it's just new to that person at that time. Yeah, I, I that all of a sudden they have this other person dependent on them. I won't say her name, but this I know this applies to a lot of people who listen to this podcast, but grandmothers or grandparents, I mean, not not just grandmothers, but I know one member who is, I think she's older than you. I th- yeah, she's. I think we're close in age. Yeah. I know, I think I know who you're and talking she about. she takes care of She gives a lot of time to her grandchildren. Every day. Yes. And I don't even know if I could. <laughs> yeah. No, she spends. Take care of somebody else's They kids. get a lot of her energy. Yes, and I, and she finds time to sew. Yeah, she still sews. Um, But I know she must be tired. Well, I think the other thing is. It must make her happy too. You but... know, some people just complain more about their situation than others. Right, like, I mean, it's, I guess it's like not I'm like, right now. It's not like, well, it's not like, it's not like every young mother doesn't have this dilemma of no. deciding what to do. Everybody has it. Some um, complain more. Some feel more sorry for themselves. Some, I think, sort of um, embrace it and go, how can I figure my way around sure. this? What can I do? Well, One way you can do is you have a specific sewing spot picked out. A spot. Is and you don't good. have to keep cleaning it up and putting it away. Or what You, you got to make that little spot for yourself. And Jennifer, of uh, she's 1,000 hours of sewing on Facebook. She said that you – or on Facebook, on Instagram – she said that you inspired her to have a spot. Right. I think it's in her kids' playroom, I, actually. Yeah, well, and some people will do that. They'll have it so that the kids Close can play to next show. to yes, them, yes. right? Um, and I, I, I've told people, if it's a corner of your master bedroom, who cares? Well, what that you does, know. so if you can't schedule sewing time. I, right. I had been, before I had uh, Jerome listening to a few podcasts about like productivity, and a lot of it is about routine right and scheduling right and i'm like i will be able to do this in maybe like nine months you know (laughs) like when you have when you have a newborn like they're you're kind of on their schedule you know um a little bit of course i can try and schedule things in but if you have a spot and then you're like oh right uh, baby's asleep, other right. kids napping. You're not taking, and you're not spending time putting away, yes. cleaning up, or whatever. So if you have the spot, that gives you the space, and right. then you can, when you have well, the time. And go the other to thing it. that's going to happen if you're a parent is it's all going to change because yeah. all of a sudden they're not babies and toddlers anymore, and that's kind of a shock. Uh, Sam, Sam's probably got a little of this happening now. They go to 
real school. Yeah. Not preschool where you've decided what time they're going to go mm. or when you're going to pick them up or the morning or the afternoon. Right. They go to some sort of public school. Right. Or even if you're homeschooling, you know, what happens is now you're on that schedule and that's not... I guess with homeschooling, you can make it your schedule, I guess. I'm not that familiar, but... You know, my kids went to public school. I was on the school schedule. Right. And then all of a sudden, my children developed a social calendar. Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. And guess who was their chauffeur? So I was their chauffeur. I was their cook. I was their um, gift. You know, I had to go find a gift, make a gift, you know, for these birthday parties. And so you think it's easier when they're little or it's, you know, it's, or it's going to be, yeah, it's just, or it's going to be easier at one age. It's not. It just changes. It just, it just changes and you have to change with it. I mean, I think the newborn phase, I'm, I'm, I would call myself a very young parent. I have like a two and a half year old. Right. Right. So I've been a parent for two and a half years, right. you know, uh, but I, I sometimes I think the newborn phase is maybe like the easier I one because they can't get see, away from you. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> they aren't they aren't trying to get up and drink Drano right. or put their fingers in light sockets. They're confined. It's when they start crawling and walking and moving, and then that's a really hard time from like that like you know nine ten month period till they're about three two or, two and yeah. a half, and you can say you'll kill yourself if you do that. Right. And they'll listen to you. Yes. Yes. You know, a lot of it before that, you're just watching and playing pull away from danger and <laughs> distraction. <laughs> you're just keeping that kid alive till it can understand you. Well, yeah. And then and then you don't know what they're doing. Right. Well, it gets a, quiet. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Thank God, you know, when mine got quiet, they were only doing something like okay. cutting their hair. Well, so what I really <laughs> wanted to talk about in this episode oh we haven't done that yet how grateful you are to have me as your child so could you (laughs) elaborate on that that's how this is supposed to come around like oh it's so hard to raise kids i think one like mallory and it's so great you know (laughs) i think raising children is probably the biggest challenge on earth because you don't know if you're doing it right you don't get a grade for it. You don't get paid for it. Nobody, most people just criticize you. They don't tell you you're doing a good job. You don't know if this child is going to be a criminal. That's <laughs> you right. Don't, you <laughs> don't know. You don't know anything. You know, um, but you know there is a reward in the fact that I do have three children that are these fantastic people that contribute to society. They're. You're all very different, yet you have this sort of ethical base that I'm so glad you have. And that's the big thing. Like, you have this baby, and you've got to make him, like, what if he's a real jerk? I know. Yeah. Like, you know, basically, my goal is to have my kid not kids not be an <laughs> asshole. Like, I, <laughs> No, that is, it really is. Well, I mean, I, or I know people that go, oh, my child went to his and this Ivy League school, and, and the child's a jerk. Well, you I know. also am getting to the point where, like, Zelda is expressing her feelings Yeah, that's funny. They and, get the mind of their own. And I'm like, oh, no, now she can, like, get hurt. Yes. You know? And, and guess what and I'm that like, is also a lesson yeah and i'm like well she's got to yep. deal with that stuff yep, like we got you know and I, i'm like oh but it's it's gonna be hard to like I well mean, she, you know she the only p- the only you know most you get hurt more through your children than yourself i when you see yeah. you know your children and, and there's can be some big hurts i mean little disappointments they need absolutely everybody needs to learn to deal with but um you know you that it I think it tugs at my heartstrings when I think something bad has happened to my child. I feel like I'm we so ZD and I basically live in the same house. We live on the same property. Okay, so we have our own like we both have our own kitchens. We both, both have, have our, our own, own abodes and like driveways and right. stuff. We live on the same property. Our houses are connected, and sometimes I think like by the studio, of yeah, course. Uh, sometimes I think about like. Oh, I'm feeling this about Zelda, or I'm feeling this about Jerome, and I'm like, oh my gosh, my mom must have been feeling this, and I like, I feel your physical proximities, you know? Right, like, right, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the bathtub thinking about this is what happens most of the time. Or, <laughs> or you know, there I'm are like, times where you, oh my you're... gosh, you know, and I, I think about mm-hmm. things that must have hurt, like that hurt me personally. Right. And I'm like, wonder how my mom felt when she saw me hurting, get hurt you like know? that, like, right? Not like the, you know, not something like that. 
anyone like in the family did like right. to, you know hurt me but i'm like oh when i was in school you mean like when they used to do the swishies and all yeah, that yeah swir- well, swirlies yeah you know when my sister mallory tried to, was tortured as a child when my sister tried to jam me in a trash can at the mall you know um <laughs> but you know but i'm like oh when, when i was when i was little and somebody you know took my toy away or something and mom saw me cry when i was two and like when zelda cries it makes me very sad you know most of the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know there's know. those times, too, where you don't like your kids. <laughs> I haven't I'm kind of getting there a well, little bit. Well, <laughs> I think they, I think most of the time they need to be a little bit older. Yeah. But I do remember one time a friend of mine calling me, and she's like, how are you? And I go, I, Hillary did this, and then Lindsay did this, and then Mallory did this, and oh, my God, Jerry's such a jerk, and blah, blah, blah. And she goes... You know, you used to have this saying that you had three children so that you'd at least have one you weren't mad at. I go, I know, and I'm mad mad at everybody right now. I was like, you know, I was just like fed up with everybody. And it was nothing big. It was just like I was probably tired. Right. (laughs) You know, and irritated, and people weren't going along with my program. I don't know. Well, if you are a caretaker in a caretaking position with a passion for sewing. Well, you know, that's the other end of the spectrum is I have taken care of many elder, you know, I've had an aunt that I had to take care of, a mother Uh I had to take care of, and a father I had to take care of. And that's the whole other end. And you're the peanut butter in the sandwich. I I had small children, and I was taking care of the elderly at the same time. And right. that's a really difficult position to be in. And I still sewed. I think a lot of people are in that position. But I yeah. just want to say, if you're in that position, if if this is something you've been struggling with, I do think it's important to kind of be kind to yourself. Because I have felt sometimes, I'm like, oh, I didn't get this done. I'm just like a failure because I didn't like – you know, feed my baby and then kiss it and then get all this sewing done and then also do this and then also do that. And, like, I'm trying to – I haven't, like, cooked anything for months because I don't like to cook while I'm pregnant. And I'm like, I should have, like, looked up those frozen Crock-Pot meals and put those together and done this and done that, Well, don't think the people on Pinterest and Facebook are telling you the truth either. That's the other thing. I haven't had time to be on Pinterest. But don't think other people's (laughs) lives are a reflect. You know, that you're really seeing what they are. Yeah, sure. Okay? If my kids are happy and safe, I'm happy and safe. And you know what? They can eat cereal a couple nights a week if they if, if they really... You know, there is the story about you and the peaches. Do you yeah. remember no, that tell, story? Tell the story about that. That's a good wrap-up. Okay. Well, guilt is a parent. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't remember. I believe it was when Lindsay was in high school and I was... Uh, probably costuming the show choir and costuming the fall play and and I am working full time and driving Mallory around and everybody else and I um anyway I didn't get a lot of grocery shopping done and I came home and Mallory was sitting at the kitchen counter we had you know stools at the counter where you you ate at the counter yeah she had a can of peaches and she was eating like the peaches out of the can and she said, will we ever have fresh fruit again? Because <laughs> Mallory was slightly dramatic as a child also. <laughs> and I said, only if they sell it at the gas station. <laughs> and because that was like the only place I was going. But And now they do sell fresh fruit at the gas station. That's right. And most days they did not. <laughs> but um, she has had fresh fruit. Uh, we got some peach trees. <laughs> that's right. And we have uh, really fresh peaches. Said, so what I'm saying is don't feel guilty about the canned peaches if that's what you have to do to get it all done. And I was very involved with all my children and what they were doing in school and that takes a lot of time also. But guess what? I knew who their friends were and I knew what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I liked you being involved too. You know, I never. I know. Felt, I, I asked you all that like years later after I, I already felt did it. Embarrassed of you as a parent till lately. until now. <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, no. <laughs> um, till last week. <laughs> yeah. No, you did dance with me. You. Oh, that's right. Our play. That, now that's something I did. That was fun. Like I couldn't work out. I couldn't get exercise in because yeah. Mallory danced so much. Okay, I like five hours a week or something. I don't remember what it was, and. You know, I'm the carpooling parent. My two other daughters are like, like out of the house. One's at college, like so no longer have that other person driving. And I just go to the ballet teacher and I said, "Do you think it would be okay if I did the bar work? You know, during ballet class because I, I'm sitting around and getting like gushy. You know, and she's like, oh no, that's fine. Well, I took the class, I did the bar work, and then when they went to the floor, she goes, 
oh, no, I, I expect you to do the floor, too. So I wound up taking, what, four years? Three years? Yeah, four Yes, I was, a, and you guys, I was like in my 50s. She looks fabulous. I was just wonderful. And not only that, then recital came around. Yeah. And the teacher like blackmailed me into being in the recital. Mom was Capelius in Capelia. And actually, I had been Capelius 30 years before. Yeah. Yes. And uh, then you like wrote the ballet one year. Remember? Oh, I forgot about the dream, that. I the did. dream ballet. The dream sequence ballet, yes. And then you were in, like, the dances. Right, yeah. I was yeah. always in, I was in every, almost, well, not everything you did. All the ballet and the jazz are um, yeah, you modern. you were in the tap. No, I didn't do the tap. I'm, I shouldn't have been in the tap either. <laughs> Mallory, usually, Mallory usually did her own tap dance when everyone else was dancing. I, yeah. Well, not only that, I was doing the costumes, too. I'm not a very good tap dancer. Well, while, while I was dancing with Mallory, I was also doing the costumes, not just for her class, but the entire ballet right, school. Right. 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 Okay. Well, I think we've had a really good little conversation here. I'm glad I'm your mother. I'm glad I'm your daughter. <laughs> I'm glad you're my kids, sugar. I'm glad you've uh, only been embarrassed of me. Yeah, just, re- just recently, yeah. you know. Um, and every but everybody out there, I don't know. Take heart. Talk to us in the self sewn wardrobe. Uh, email us if you want to. We will be here to support you. Um, and we are ZD Sewing Studio on Instagram or the self sewn wardrobe on Instagram. And thank you once again to Michelle A. Sews for letting me read your post. Uh, and I'll, we'll put a link to her Instagram account, uh, in the show notes. It's a public account. She talks about sewing. I don't think she'll mind. Uh, maybe I should ask her. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you all very much for supporting us in our journey as well. And yeah, mom, take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.